We bought this out back in April of 2020. This is actually our seventh Subaru. Some have gone to family, some have gone to employees. Even though Subarus are pretty capable off-road, I still wanted more. So when Torque Masters came out with their TL1601B, I knew I had to have it. So I placed my order as soon as it was available, and I received it. But I didn't actually try to install it until around January of 2022. I bought all the things that I thought would be necessary, seals, gaskets, uh, even some yellow paint, uh, and then some tools. I have a list down at the bottom so you can see what tools I used. I watched a couple of videos on how people took apart the rear end. Uh, I'm not new to taking apart cars and fixing things, but this is actually more difficult than I expected. Uh, the hardest part was getting that rear end out of the car. I started like a lot of videos, and I started removing some of the suspension pieces. I circled the bolts here. Short story, I don't recommend it. Once I got all the oil drain and I got my differential out, I started disassembling the rear cover. You can see my nearly useless spider gears there. You can see how I tore up the seals trying to yank the CV joints out with the previous method. I don't recommend it. However, make sure you mark the sundials so you can reassemble them later. I bought a couple of tools that said that they were for the sundial covers, but they ended up not fitting and I ended up breaking a few fins, so I just fabricated my own using an oil filter wrench. The side loading that I did here with that wrench actually wasn't ideal, so I'd recommend a T-handle. Once you get those sundials out, uh, just be careful. Those things uh, have kind of delicate little threads, but your carrier will just kind of drop right out. Unbolt your ring gear, and then here's where you'll need a punch to help drive the roll pin out of that main pin there uh, that holds everything together. I have no idea where this poker chip came from. Slide out your spider gears from the side. Uh, just make sure you don't lose that little thrust washer that's on each side, uh, and try to maintain the, the position for each of those. So take the one on the right, set it to the right, and then set the one on the left to the left someplace. And bummer, Subaru decided to change the carrier after about 20 years of using the same one, and it just happened on the 2020 model. So I can absolutely confirm that the TL1601B does not fit in the XT carriers. It took forever, but Torque Masters came out with the TLVA225 locker. So I was back to tearing apart my rear end again, but this time I chose a different method. Uh, this was way easier, so I do recommend it. I'll go through the steps here. This time I actually removed my tires. I did not unbolt any of the suspension. And you can see my nice recalled Harbor Freight aluminum jack stand there. Uh, I survived this one. You can start by unbolting your wheel speed sensor for the ABS. Then unbolt the brake calipers. I used the larger ones instead of going for the small ones. Kind of tuck everything to the side and hang things. I used a little zip tie to hold the brake calipers so they didn't put strain on the brake lines. Make sure you get that wheel speed sensor out of the way too so that doesn't get uh, damaged. Next, I removed the rotor. I just kind of tapped it with a rubber mallet and it broke free. Then I removed the four bolts that hold the wheel bearing assembly. You can see those around kind of circling the CV joint on the back side. Now, this is where it got kind of fun. I used a slide hammer to try to pull that bearing assembly apart. I did not remove the, the axle shaft nut, kept that together so that way I didn't accidentally pull the bearing apart. And I ended up destroying my slide hammer. Luckily, I got the job done before it completely failed on me. I ended up buying a different tool I found on Amazon after the fact, so I haven't tried it out, but supposedly it works pretty good. Once I got both sides out, then it was time to move to the drive shaft. Uh, that's actually pretty easy. I used a wrench to help hold the thing from spinning. Then I unbolted the differential, the rear two bolts there, and then I did the front. And then it took a little bit of wrestling, but I got the differential to drop pretty easily. Once it's out, it's the same drill again. Recover, mark and remove the sundial covers, then it's the ring gear, then it's the roll pin, then the main pin, and then slide out your spiders. And this time, make sure you keep track of those end shims. You may not be using those again. Torque Masters does provide some different sizes, and what we're trying to do is trying to get the gap right between the locker halves. Yeah, it's going. Okay, so here's 161. It's a good snug fit. 161, good snug fit. Go on the other side. Okay, 161. 
snug fit, 161, snug fit. I tried to add two thousandths more and it was too tight, it wouldn't fit. So it is 161 inches. Okay. Next, clean up your parts, reinstall gaskets, seals, and everything else. Put on your rear cover, torque the bolts down to 21.7 foot pounds, reinstall your rear diff, and then fill. Once you get your bearing housing put back in, this time you are going to remove the CV shaft nut. You're going to use a mallet or a gear puller and try to force that CV shaft back into the differential. Then you're going to finish bolting everything together and give her the spin test. Okay, here we go. Last test. Spin it forward. Okay. She clicks. Spin it back. She clicks. All right, pass her side, forward, okay, and reverse, okay, forward, all right, she worky. Man, that's beautiful. It really should have came this way from the factory. Hope this helps, and here's some of the tools that I used. Uh, everything was pretty much from Harbor Freight. Um, worked good enough. One-time use, two-time use, good enough. Thank you.